Let me give you a brief summary of the terms we've encountered so far. We started with the definition of the vector. A vector was any kind of object that can be added to another object of the same kind or multiplied by a real number, the result being another object of the same kind. And our canonical examples were geometric vectors or polynomials and more generally functions, also elements of Rn and audio signals. And in your academic research and professional lives, you'll encounter hundreds of other examples. Then when you put addition and multiplication by number together, you get a linear combination. Earlier on, we mentioned decomposition. And of course, we're going to talk a lot more about decomposition and when it's possible and when it's not possible and so forth. But in the linear combination, you're given a bunch of vectors and as many numbers, and you multiply those vectors by the numbers, add them together, and produce the result. Decomposition is the opposite operation. When you're given the vectors, and you're given the right-hand side, and you need to determine the coefficients of the linear combination that would produce that right-hand side. So decomposition is very much tied to the notion of linear combination, but, it's, but in a sense, it's the inverse of that operation. And then I must have used a couple times without even realizing it, the terms vector space and linear space. Those are complete synonyms, and they mean the totality of all objects of the same kind that can be added together and multiplied by a number to produce another object of the same kind. So, for example, polynomials form a vector space, and geometric vectors in the plane form a vector space and geometric vectors in the space, in the three-dimensional space, form a vector space. And R3 is a vector space or a linear space. And R2, and more generally Rn, is a vector space. Uh, but I can give you some more nuanced examples. For example, if we consider the subset of polynomials that are of degree 3 or less, these objects in and of themselves form a vector space a smaller vector space than the space of all polynomials. If you look at polynomials of power 2 or less, uh, that's a vector space. However, you have to be careful. You cannot really say that quadratic polynomials form a linear space. Let's take x squared plus x and minus x squared. Their sum is x, and that's not a quadratic polynomial. So the sum of those two quadratic polynomials is not another quadratic polynomial, so you have to be careful. You have to say polynomials of degree 2 or less. That's why I use that terminology. So that's these terms. Also, I feel like uh, this lecture needs a little bit of closure. So closure is a, is a nice word, and it's really a synonym for being vector space and linear space if you use it correctly. And the way you use it is by saying that let's say geometric vectors in the plane are closed under addition and closed under multiplication by a number. Closed under addition means exactly what we said before, that a sum of two objects of that kind is another object of that kind. It's a closed island, or it's a closed room, it's a closed space. You can't get out of that space by addition or multiplication by a number. Or, more generally, we're talking about closure under linear combination. So you can say, for instance, that polynomials are closed under linear combinations. We observe closure under linear combinations. And to say that a set of certain objects is closed under linear combinations is equivalent to saying that those objects form a vector space or a linear space.